Hello, assassineers. Let me start that again. Wrong. Do it again. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Wait, are you trying to put attacktioneers with assassin? Yeah, I've done that before. You just have never listened to the podcast. Hello, assassineers. Welcome to the Assassin Action Podcast. I'm your host with the Assassin Tattoo, Taylor Morrow. I'm here with Colin Blake and Zane. Blake, how are you? I've been watching movies on Sundays, so that's been a fun like way to put a button on things of like get transported, get inspired, get get some new storytelling in my life. So last Sunday it was Francis Ford Coppola's The Conversation, which was absolutely insane. I would uh, do that. But last night it was a movie where it was like, this is a six part movie, but all in different, not in the right order. And I was like, Quentin Tarantino, <laughs> what are you Romita. doing here? Um, that's probably for later. It was probably, I was probably just supposed to say, I'm good. <laughs> I'm yeah. good. <laughs> Blake still hasn't figured out this first section where we just say hello. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's because he never tells a 10 minute back story. To the episode, yeah. He's just doing Blake things. Okay. Colin, what's going on with you, my friend? <laughs> I right, waited. That's an open ended question. <laughs> yeah, nothing. Nothing's, nothing's going on with me. Sick. You got pancakes recently? <laughs> No homes yet purchased or anything. Are we in the personal update section? I'm very confused about where we are and how long I should be talking right now. We're melding it, as is oh, the theme of Rosetta. Oh, let's go. I haven't heard of that. Uh, <laughs> I'm I'm fine. I honestly, if we recorded this podcast on Friday, it would have been tight. <laughs> <laughs> End of my day kind of sucked so here we are (laughs) i'm (laughs) doing my best apologize zane how are you doing i am good i'm tired uh played battle hardened and age this last weekend and and new is really really taxing i I slept poorly i was still in like all my new play lines and and where's my cheat where's my cheat yeah so i i'm tired today but you know doing good doing good Taylor, how about you? Uh, gosh, I am really psyched to be here because this is the last thing I have to do today, and it's fun and it's spoiler season. But uh, we'll talk about it in the personal stuff section. But I'm fine. I'm fine, and I'm psyched though to be here. So, thank you, the listener, for being here. Episode ninety-seven. We're going to be talking about our weekends where we all of us mostly played Flesh and Blood. And spoiler season has just started. And I like never know when it's going to start. And it's just starting. And I thought it was going to be chill this season. And now there's so much stuff going on. And it's pretty crazy. So we're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about our tournaments. Uh, What else? What was the other thing I wanted to say? Fuck. I don't know. Anyway, um, hmm, here we are. Let's uh, let's do personal personal updates from our lives. I'll go first since I'm still talking. Uh, school has started. Today was my first Monday. Oh, that's what I wanted to say. Thanks, Colin, for reminding me. Happy fourth anniversary to the Attack Action Podcast. As of Saturday was our very first episode released. And now it's Monday, and we did it. Four years. Longest flesh and blood podcast in the world. Congratulations to us. Thank you, Blake and Zane, for continuing the tradition. Colin, thank you for being a pillar of this podcast that I can rest my beverage or potted plant on a pillar, I think. Yeah, I'm useful, I swear. <laughs> <laughs> you mean our podcast is about to start Montessori school? <laughs> no, because it's we're done now, right? Four years, you're it? We're yeah, just, it's done. You die at that point? <laughs> oh my gosh, that's not what happened to Fab. Fab got stronger after four years. You decompose and be reborn. Mm, true. 
but right, happy, happy, happy anniversary, Taylor. You, <laughs> you've been here for four years. I've done it. I have done it. And we'll keep doing it. Speaking of <laughs> me kind of like a doing it, <laughs> uh, school has started and I am teaching health this year and we have an influx of freshmen. So I am at max capacity in my classroom based on textbooks, seating, and my wits. <laughs> so today I spent 20 minutes standing in front of the classroom saying absolutely nothing and being like, okay, well, I've committed to this. I'm just going to stand here silently and somebody's got to notice that I'm waiting for them to shut up so I can teach. And uh, then so much time went by, I was like, if I start saying something, I will lose this battle in perhaps one of these children's eyes. So I'm just going to stay up here. And then a beautiful moment happened where one of my most known disruptors used a elementary school attention getter, like, where's the waterfall sound or whatever, and went, shh, and then everybody shut up. And I was like, okay, this kid is a known disruptor, and he got you all to be quiet. What does that say about <laughs> you as a class? <laughs> And uh, that was much funnier to me and the aide in my class than I think the children. They're mostly confused and then started talking once I started talking. So anyway, school. And uh, we almost had like a volleyball game cancellation last minute, but we didn't. And it just blah, 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 blah. But again, thank you, our Lord and Savior, flesh and blood. I'm so psyched. How can you be upset when there's like 40 cards spoiled today? Zane, what's going on with you? You know, not a whole lot. Uh, you know, was prep prepping for the battle hard in San Diego. Finally got an event down here. Um, you know, went pretty well, all things considered. But yeah, doing good. I got my Stroop waffle coin, and it's uh, it's my birthday this week. So you know, a lot of big oh, exciting wow. stuff. Wow, that's great, Zane. How old are you going to be? So old. 31. Oh my God. This okay. Okay. <laughs> Wait, what? That was your birthday. It's tomorrow. Okay. You're definitely Happy the aurora no, no one, of the group here, I think. No, I won't say what date it is if you, but also, like, what's your social security? <laughs> <laughs> Real quick, I need to write this down for the podcast. That's twice he's tried to get you guys with your personal information. I am fishing he's, today. He's working for it. <laughs> 31 years old. Wow. Yeah. I'll be the Aurora going to yeah. Volt, Volt Haven. Is that where they're going? Did y'all see that meme that was like... Where they race? It was well, like... Candle hold. Candle hold. Candle. Character from this. And then it was like a Fortnite skin. <laughs> and it was Aurora. <laughs> it was like, it's so good. <laughs> she is a Fortnite skin. <laughs> she yeah. is. Anyways. And I'll, I'll be that. that. I'll embody that a bit. Yeah, but yeah, that's all. I was with me. bored for this. Skibbity. Blake's yeah. a loser. Loser. <laughs> <laughs> and yet she's best friends with like an eternal being or something. Like I don't understand well, that relationship. Best friends seems like a strong. They're frenemies. Seems, seems like me and my students. They're like <laughs> companions, you know. Um, that, I don't. I don't know about the Stroop waffle coin. Is there some significance to this that I'm like, so, is, are you like blood bound forever to your team now? Or no, a no. Dope coin. Wait, flip that back around. That was tight. Yeah. Get so, that in here. You know how metal fab tokens does like the special coin for every event. Dude. So they posted like, Oh, what should we do the coin for Amsterdam PT Amsterdam? And then like, we all commented like, Hey, you got to do a Stroop waffle. That's true. And, that is a thing. Uh, so, and he did one of the sides was a stroop waffle, and so Jimmy on our team, shout out Jimmy, he bought like a bunch of them for all for the team, and uh, I forget his name, but whoever runs Metal Fab Tokens was nice to like give us a deal to buy a bunch of them. Um, but Oliver had mine because I didn't go to Amsterdam, and so Battle Hard in San Diego was when it finally came to me, um, and I'm very fond of it. It's very nice. There you go. Context. Shout out that to looks, Oliver. That looks nicer. Than and like thicker. anyone I've seen, it's like it's it's I, heavy and nice. Yeah, that's yeah. like I love I the talk, white. It looks tight. We I like talk thick. a lot of shit, but I never went after that surfboard. I we needed the Hollywood sign for the the coin for 
for the uh, Pro Tour LA. The yeah. surfboard was so disappointing in my mind. California, bro. Uh, yeah, because it's it's not you can't fit it in your deck box. You're just like, like shut. Sure. Also, yeah. people in Los Angeles don't surf. It's people in the beach cities surf. <laughs> That's Los Angeles. We're telling like, you it's not, okay? I live like 25 <laughs> miles from the beach, bro. I'm telling you it is, bro. <laughs> dude, I told someone at work today that they had to go to our client and be like, dude, you need to make your decision right now. <laughs> <laughs> Did that, that work? Happy. I don't know. We'll see. I'll find out tomorrow when mm. they were supposed to have made their decision. Nice. It's so funny. You live in Southern California and you're like beach beach area according to the world, but you're like... 30 miles from the ocean. I'm literally like three miles from the ocean. Yeah. <laughs> Bruh, so it's uh, Moshaka is up here, dog. <sighs> Should I just be a surfer? Dude, I had right no now? idea you could do that. Oh, dude. Yeah, where'd Taylor go? <laughs> your crouching tiger killed me, bro. Ty. You came in and you were like, whoopa. And then Whoa. you were like, bon, <laughs> and then I was like, oh, dang, I'm dead. I was just so pitted. Yeah. <laughs> Blake, okay, tell us about your life. Jesus Christ. Uh, yeah, I've been going to movies on Sunday. <laughs> so Are there's this do movie. A alien Marathon? Because that would be cool. Oh, I cool. watched Alien Romulus. That was good. I think I told you guys about that one last time. Or maybe it wasn't quite there. That was good. You got to go see Alien Romulus now. Uh, the picture of Taylor, but it's not Taylor. It's a an actor. It looks like this. Yeah, I'm just like a little bit buffer for sure. So, Ooh, look at that, dude. Oh, that showing, camera's really locked in. Showing a pepperoni. Nice. Sheesh. All right, my turn. Um, <laughs> yeah, no, I'm, I am about to talk a whole bunch in the back half of this because there's a whole tournament that you guys even go to that I would have to like talk for about an hour and a half of and like. I'll it's, hit it's, stop recording. It's going <laughs> to be crazy. Uh, no, I bought an artist proof from Haley, haleyneighbors.com slash artistproofs.com. And uh, she didn't give it to me because she's like, I'll, I'll give it to you on Tuesday. But then they said they're going to play World of Warcraft on Tuesday. So I think I got scammed, but we'll see what it looks like and I'll post it. What did you request? Um, that yeah, guy I, that looks like me. I did. I was like, I want an artist proof of Taylor from the Attack Action podcast. But naked. No, I'm getting Azuri because I don't have a real Azuri. I, I don't have like, all I have is an Azuri token. I don't know if people saw that and was like, what the hell? Does he not care about bling? And so I got an Azuri artist proof where it's the Challengers poster and in one, one sunglass it'll be Riptide and one sunglass it'll be Arachne. That's great. Shout out to Haley. Yeah, she did this wait, whose face is in the middle? Oh. It's Azuri's face. Is wearing this Azuri's outfit. face, yes. Oh, okay. That's she showed me a cute. picture of that of like, yeah, I did this one once. And it's like, well, I guess mine's going to look exactly like that, but with Riptide <laughs> on it as well. <laughs> great. Cool. That's fun. That's awesome. Yeah. Great work, everybody. Colin, did you talk about your life? Do you want to talk about your life? How long we got? <laughs> as long as you need, bro. Yeah. All right. Well, let me take my pants off real quick and get comfortable. Uh, sure. So how would you say to your therapist? <laughs> no, I just do it again. All <laughs> oh, right. It's a video Tele call. Teletherapy. Yeah. She can't see my lower. Anyway, that's gross. Knees. I don't do that. Your knees. I never knees. do that. My pants are always on. Like, that's everyone knows that about me. <laughs> Even in the shower. Uh, let's see. All right. So this month was crazy. I was at Google to premiere the new Pixel 9 phones that were all leaked before the event. I mean, we spent like three weeks setting up an event for like a four-hour show. <laughs> and some asshole from The Verge snuck into our area and took a picture of it. And they got mad at us for some reason. But it was fine. He's never coming back to Google. Uh, it was crazy. I think I worked like 80 hours that week, which was a lot. Uh, I was very tired. Came That's home, it. hired three people, 
And then my life got really good for about like two days. And I think I was too, I, you know, I flew too close to the sun. <laughs> I was like too happy and excited about it. And then today it was just like, how about just fuck you, Colin? Like, <laughs> so that was, that was, that was just today though. Uh, <laughs> You know, everything else is fine. We're we haven't we haven't bought a house yet. We might make an offer on a place. We saw a cool place yesterday. So that's uh that'll be interesting. We'll see how that goes. So you're not headed to Tampa in two weeks, but is anybody of us going to Tampa in two weeks? No. Unfortunately not. Dane has the wedding. I'm here to announce I am still not going to Tampa next week. <laughs> Tight. So I think it's fun to – what would Tampa be like if you would go? But well, let's do shout-outs first. Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's a great question. Shout-outs. I'll go first here. Uh, this is a, a triple shout-out to Levi, our – my friend and neighbor and local LGS owner. He, uh, without honor, won our – local skirmish on Zen uh, and did so handedly. And congratulations to him. He was very excited, as he should be. And then also shout out, this is the big news, is our shop, local shop, on October 6th gets a ProQuest. So if you are within any sort of distance to Eureka, California. You need to show up, especially if you listen to this podcast. It's a big deal for our area. We've never had anything like this. You're also all fucked because I've never played in a legit tournament and slept in my own bed and never driven, you know, less than 10 minutes or whatever. It's always like four hours maximum, minimum. So be warned that you might get dunked on because I'll be <laughs> unleashed. As will Patrick and Levi. So wait, are you inviting Brody Spurlock though? <laughs> Dude, don't Hell yeah. <laughs> Dude, Brody Spurlock can fucking show up. Brody can stay in my house if he wants. Gotta you hide those ham sandwiches. <laughs> I doubt you he's coming. don't want that smoke coming your way, man. I'll put him in the big circus tent outside that we have. Uh, anyway, so please show up to that. Please support it. If you can make it that weekend, I think What's the format, the format, well, I think it's classic instructed. I don't think it's draft. Um, nice. how many spots yeah, so, are open? Uh, minus three through whatever. I don't know. Let's say oh, there's six, 61. Okay, sure. <laughs> uh, <laughs> that would be so sick. But yeah, please show up. I think we're going to try to do a Living Lurkers tournament with some local prize support uh, on the Saturday before because I think October 6th is a Sunday. It's the first weekend of ProQuest season. So show up. DM Levi, DM me. Let's let's get this party started. Let's have a great time. We'll, I, I will show you a good time. I promise. At the Benji well, guy. <laughs> yeah. Uh or at iPad Baby. I don't know where he is. On all those are his two <laughs> it's, handles. It's one of the two. Yeah, <laughs> one of the two. Uh, also, shout out if you could give Levi a ton of overwhelming support. The shop is going through a really hard time right now, drama, etc., which I can't expand upon on the podcast. But does he have a website? I haven't bought anything from him. I think they do, but they just sell product, not singles. Fine, it's nrtcg.net. And oh, if I do dot net, my computer explodes. So here we go. Oh, FBI NRTCG. Will, FBI will be there soon. Don't Close worry. your dot gov tab. That's why. Uh, anyway, so just uh, sh you know, show him some love. Just tell him you love him and support him, and that he's he's a great person and all that stuff. So those are my shout outs. Shout out to Levi. Oh shit! Bolton decks are zero dollars. <laughs> Fuck. Look at this. Look Still at overpriced. Oh. Hey. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Got him. Let's go. <laughs> Be the change, everybody. Yeah. Cheers. No change because it was free. Hey. Boom. 
Um, I'll go ahead and shout out uh, a wonderful person named Zan Romanoff who interviewed Taylor and I for the Descript uh, blog about podcasting. Uh, Descript is like a it's like an editing software. I think it does transcription. We don't actually use it. That wasn't the point. We talked about making podcasts and the wonderful meet cute of Taylor and I and, uh, you know, the Cinderella story of turning <laughs> turning from a fan into a beautiful co-host uh, <laughs> that I was able to do. Uh, Every little girl's dream. Every little girl's dream. I love this photo that she found of you, which looks like you're like you're like about to cry, kind of. You're just kind of like. It's my zesty, I think, uh, Twitter photo. Yeah, you're like squinched up, and then she found like my default <laughs> profile photo from like uh, last decade. But that's because I haven't updated it in a while. But yeah, it was really nice talking to her. And, uh, you know, it's a fun little article. Maybe I'll link it in the description if you all want to check that out. But if you don't know if she's listening now because, you know, this podcast, it's like that was the thing. It's like this podcast just can't be for everybody because if you don't play Flesh and Blood, it really doesn't make any sense. So, uh, But that was a fun experience and fun to kind of go down memory lane a little bit talk about our roots and uh, how we got where we are and what we're doing now. So. <clears throat> Go check it out. It. Tight. I have a shout out. Wonderful. Um, I was really cool. I I did reach out to Josh from the the Discord from the Attack Action Podcast, where if you are a Patreon member, you can go to. Um, he was like, I was like, hey, do you want to do Battle Heart in San Diego? And I know he he works nights, and I told me what his job does, and it's really interesting of like treats the water for the city and it's like oh those people need to be doing that around the around the clock that makes sense so it's really hard for him to like i could never do all four rounds because i would have to go to my night job where i'm going to go spend 12 hours it's like oh shit. yeah that's awful so i was like hey do you want to go to battle harden and he was like let's do it and that was the first time where like instead of getting in a room with six or getting a room with like three or, or like a bigger amount it was literally just me and one other person and it was like we're gonna do fun stuff first which includes playing fab but is not limited to and like as soon as it was round seven was over it was like go take your put a new shirt on go out and gas lamp and it was like we went to tacos el gordo at like 5 30 and we were in and out in 10 minutes and then we ate and we were drinking somewhere else and someone was like did you guys uh, like I posted the picture of tacos El Gordo and they're like you ate there and I was like yeah it was super easy like you, it should be fine and they're like there's a line that's like 150 people long right now for it <laughs> and that was like less than two hours later and it was like thank God I went with Josh and did everything because it was like we were quick and we were doing stuff instead of like oh are you feeling tired enough to go or do you want to go out it was just like this is the crew to do it and it feels like that's a good way to not just play the game, but see the world. Like I've seen San Diego, but it was interesting of like, we, we splurged on the hotel. So it's right next to the convention center. We splurged on some other things. And like, we went out both Friday night and I started off three O or whatever. And then went off, went out Saturday night and then didn't play. But like, it was like, I don't like Guinness, but I guess I do now and drinking Guinness. And it was like, okay, sick. We went to all the Irish bars and then Chris Stidger came out Saturday night after him doing awful. He went, oh, four, loser. Uh, just kidding. Um, he, he talked all about his life, and it was like, oh, now I know more about Chris Stidger. And he's going to be like, he's going to joke about being oh, four. Don't worry. Um, but it, it, was, <laughs> it, it was pretty interesting of like, oh, this is how you get to know people more as you like, instead of I only see you as a Riptide player that, shows up every other time like now i know a lot more about josh because i spent like five hours in a car with him it's like i'm also teaching the podcast people how to be friends but it was like oh now i know more about these people and it's like this is how we build community and like of course 
I, I don't know where I'm going with this, but it is like I'm glad I did this, and this will be a thing that I'm going to set up in my like, who's going to be my travel buddy? Wow! And, like, so we part- we're going to have to fight. Yeah, we're going to have to fight to be hotel splurgers, splurging right. on and with. Blake. I don't know. I'm I'm going to pay that bill in maybe three months, probably on my <laughs> credit card. But like. It was like, damn, that was expensive. But it was like sixty dollar <laughs> valet because that's the only place to park. It was like, y'all, y'all bitches. <laughs> like, and Zane, Zane on Friday night was like, I was like, you coming out? He was like, it takes a lot to get me there on Fridays or or something. And then on Saturday, I was like, Zane, you coming out? I didn't know. Like, spoiler, it was very important for him to play on Sunday, or I'd be like, oh, why didn't you come out? But and he can't do tacos El Gordo, and that was like the main thing. But we sat. This will be the only bar talk. We can talk about game for the rest of the time. We sat as the game was ending because we're right next to a Major League Baseball stadium. And the Major League Baseball stadium dumps out 10,000 like, people walking by you as you're drinking beer. And it's like crazy people watching. And then also the battle hardened, like people are losing in waves because... 10,000 Anthony, people. Anthony <laughs> walks by with the AGE as they're about to go get tacos al gordo when it's a big ass line. And I go, Oh, what happened? You lost your top eight match or what, bro? And it was like just a big laugh for everybody where it's like, that's fun to like. It was like, Oh, San Diego is fun to walk around because most of these times there's not one of the best bar scenes in America right next to where you played Fab for seven hours. Totally. Well, I enjoyed both of those this week. I'm glad you enjoyed San Diego. My my shout outs, which tie in a little bit to that. I mean, it sounds like a great time, Blake. I'm glad you had a good time. Thank you, Zane. My shout outs are to all the LA crew and Oliver and Ichin for coming down to San Diego. It was wonderful to see them here. I'm so used to seeing them out of my normal home space, which is often out of their nor- normal space as well. But it was very novel and charming to have them down here in San Diego. Um, it was great to see Oliver and spend some time with Oliver and Ichin. Um, we waited for Ichin to get dinner on, on Saturday. That's why I didn't come out immediately. Was We were like, oh, like let's get dinner with Ichin. Oh, he's the head judge. We're going to be here till this thing is over. <laughs> but it was worth it because we got to have dinner with Ichin. Um, but yeah, that's my shout out. And oh, one more, one more. I have um, Paul from my stream game. Check it out on the AGE Sunday. He is officially the first person ever to tell me that they listen to the podcast. Nice. The first. And I was like, I told him that. Like, I was like, you are literally the first person ever to tell me that you listen to the podcast and you like it. So I was like, cool. Thanks, Paul. And we had a good I, game. <clears throat> also, let's sur- you. You're going to surpass me pretty soon because I feel like that's only like four people. All right. <laughs> Who have been like, aren't you? How do I know you? And then into the match, like, oh, you have a podcast. Yeah. 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 So good Longest job, running. Dane. Longest yeah. running. Longest running in the world. Mo- Moises said something when we were drinking beers whenever they walked by and we're like, can we join you? And he was like, that hype house thing sounds really cool. <laughs> and I was like, you gotta start paying now, bud, or you're gonna get left behind. <laughs> it, that's you can fun. start by buying my beer. <laughs> it's fun. Everybody cool. listens to the podcast. Tell us you listen to the podcast. Interact with us. I want to know. Yeah, that reminds me. You know, last week I wasn't here. I guess two weeks ago I wasn't here because I was in Mountain View fucking with google's phones mm-hmm. <laughs> side note sergey brin didn't demean me this time so that's cool <laughs> it was nice. than the last google <laughs> event i did <laughs> uh anyways uh exactly now now he's here um i wanted to acknowledge all the people who were like super nice and supportive of our really fun episode after pro tour amsterdam um I thought it was very funny that more people watched our critical clip on the episode than the actual just isolated clip, but got a lot of good views, a lot of likes, a lot of, you know, compliments. It was very nice. Some new subscribers we beat. We crossed 800. We did it. 
It took us just two under two and a years. half years <laughs> <laughs> since I started trying to do it and being like, yeah, we could get to a thousand subscribers. That's when all the cool, you know, shit kicks in on YouTube. Uh, you know, so it would just like right now it would, it would insert a commercial for you and then you would get mad and then we would get 10 cents. But anyways, uh, <laughs> I just wanted to thank everyone. Uh, I hope, you know, I hope you stick around. Uh, this is a, this is a podcast that's about, you know, despite my previous, uh, statements about my own shit, it's about having fun and just hanging out with your friends. So like, it's a, uh, it's a good time. And, uh, I don't know. I don't know how I will repeat the critical mashup of the Pro Tour Amsterdam. But you'll, you'll shout out <laughs> shout out to Taylor who was like, oh, Sam just caught himself saying critical <laughs> on, on stream and had to stop. And I was like, I have changed the world for a better place because mm, they overuse that word so much and it drives me <laughs> insane <laughs> listening to them. So, uh, you know, it wasn't good fun, but it's also – you just fall back on these things. It's like when you join an office and everyone starts talking and using the same <laughs> stupid words over and over again. It's just like, can we just say something else? Anyways, so welcome. Stick around. Something fun will happen, I'm sure. As soon as I stop talking, something more fun will happen. Like our bet we had with each other about the attendance at San Diego Battle hardened. So for those, and we, of you, we all said it would be five hundred dollars in, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, no way. I said this number. <laughs> you did. Moises, Moises said he's uh, he's I doing he's giving you five hundred bucks. So we took a bet on the podcast about what we thought the attendance of San Diego Battle hardened would be, and it turns out. That I'm unsure who won based on our rules. What did we do? Prices right? Always prices right. Over, without going over. So whoever's closest. Closest without going over. So, so and I'm, on that note, it's been nice talking to everybody. We'll see you next time. Because <laughs> close this episode. <laughs> For what it's worth, if it's not prices right rules, I was technically the closest. That's yes. true. Yeah. But prices yeah. right is always more fun. So the pessimistic view wins this time. One dollar Bob. Wow. The one dollar <laughs> Bob. Bob. He was, wow. he was. <laughs> Blake and Zane rivalry continues. So congratulations. <laughs> I'm Blake. glad I'm winning the meaningful ones here, you know. <laughs> you won, you said 85. Zane said 103, which technically is really close to the actual yep. number, which was 98. Colin said 115, and I said 120, yo. And uh, that's t- probably too many. You want to hear the f- the coolest thing I can think about for this? The <laughs> battle hearted San Francisco had a hundred, and Let's Jake go. Jake and, and Haley drove to that one and played. But Jake and Haley were in San Diego working the booth, <laughs> so it would have been tied at a hundred. But them going down and working makes it ninety eight. Also. Taylor and Patrick went to Battle Hardened San Francisco, and that was a hundred. And they didn't go to Battle Hardened San Diego. But these guys were at both, so that's what I'm saying. Is that's what well, I'm I didn't go to either, so you're welcome. Get <laughs> fucked, Blake. Congratulations, Blake. Congratulations, <laughs> Zane. Almost got it with the hometown advantage there. Well done to you both. I was going to go, but then my friend decided to have his, like, 40th birthday party weekend next weekend. And I was like, well, I can't do both, and I'm going to go I'm gonna go party for a weekend. So <laughs> there was no competition when it came down to yeah. it. <laughs> so I need this right now. I think <laughs> some people in our Discord also... Somewhere, maybe podcast discussions. I'm trying to find it. Uh, also, put in some guesses. I'm trying to see if I can find their see, guesses. 135. Oh, you're so much faster. Patrick said 125. Uh, 
This is yeah, great content. I think it's yeah. pretty pretty sure. <laughs> These are just Stone numbers, win. man. No yeah, one else Stone was close here. Blake yeah, still I, wins. I think I know my local metas, guys. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's literally why I'm here. Wait, were the Arizona crew there? It's like technically closer, right? A little. Some, <laughs> only a couple of them. Yeah. yeah. No oh, Vore brothers. Majin Jonah did shows his. Up, so the Vore brothers could have done it. So everyone Dude. just yeah. fucked up. Yeah. yeah. That, that's an extra six people right there. Or I'll, actually, I don't know how many Vore brothers there are. That could be an extra 10. It's from. <laughs> There's two. Okay. That I know of. They, that I they know sound of. like they could be a posse. Or like the though. Snore Brothers. Right? Oh. Especially the, like from Tombstone, Arizona, yeah. the Vore Brothers coming into San Diego to take down the tournament. Do this is all my other. For 20 minutes and then you're going to go home sad. This is my other flesh and blood characters. Wild Western Vore Brother. 610 six, Decano. 610 Decano. <laughs> 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 cool okay so let's just type that into an ai bot and write that script and let's do that flesh and blood fanfic which ties awesome. right into battle heart in san diego which was won by caleb on kano Whoa. aka majin bay i was like who the fuck is caleb <laughs> <laughs> bro pretty good uh but speaking of wild west and guns let's not jump the gun <laughs> <laughs> Let's talk Ooh. about spoilers because now we're in spoiler oh country, gosh. baby. Yeah, we we rode that horsey right into spoiler country, <laughs> yeah. and then I shot it just like in Red Dead Two, and everyone gets mad. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, yeah. Uh, <laughs> dang, now I'm like depressed. Now I'm depressed. Nice. Let's Why? go. I have passed it off to someone else. <laughs> I don't know. A good horse just died in front of me did that's why but they new hang people who stole horses <laughs> <laughs> but new rune blade cards taylor do they make okay. you feel better yes that does make me feel better i'm pretty psyched i get got a majestic been, twofer too i've been freaking getting trolled by <clears throat> riptide jesus and he keeps saying i abandoned rune blade but that's not true rune blade abandoned me and now rune blade is picking up my Rune Chant Soul, my Arcanic Soul. There's something. There's a better in there. Blake, you think about it, and then you'll come up with a better pun there. Picked up the pieces of my crushed Arcane Soul off of the ground, and now has put it, distilled it into a nice little glass decanter. And uh, I'm the guy on Arcane cussing now. That's me. So are you hitting the joke about husk in there? I think Mm. (laughs) like Taylor's husk. Yeah, there you go. Your car- your carapace. There you go. There we go. Your there husk go. was condemned to slaughter, but then the new cards came out, and you're hitting all the high notes. And hocus just pocus. like that, hocus pocus, I'm back. <laughs> we just got another spoiler midway through us talking. Dude, Dude, hit this the high is notes why... of the Deadwood Dirge. Yes. Why is Runeblade the most musical class when there's a a bard class in in this game. That's honestly, that's what I, know. I, I do really want to, class, to, to say great job whenever I, cause like I complains a lot, like the, the thought process of, I think I've said this on the podcast before of like arias and like sonatas verse counters are very cool of like, like I would love a mechanic where like, because you have multiple things with verse counters on, they're stronger because the music is louder and you guys are singing in unison or something like all that is so cool where I'm like, I can see the breadcrumbs crumbing and like, I'm ready for some bread and the, and they keep on crumbing and they don't stop crumbing. <laughs> <laughs> and like, I like that stuff because I, I think there's some stuff where like I, I did music for about, 10 years of my life growing up third grade to senior year of piano and like band was super important to me. And like, I know some of these words where it's like, that's a different flavor and, and way we could do this of like, what is stronger a, a smaller pianissimo rune chant or like, if you got the loudest rune chant in all of Aria, could you blow up the demonastery? That would be like a, Ooh, look at this lore. We want to blow up Solana, bro. Not the Demonastery. It was an accident. Demonastery reigns supreme. 
Okay, let us go around the horn here and talk about uh, one to two cards. Zane, you start, because I haven't heard from you in a while. Okay, let's do it. <laughs> I'll take the one that Blake was going to talk about, because that's funny. Boom, in your face, you got caught! I this saw it huge. coming from a mile away. <laughs> also, it is my my dear teammate spoiler, so it makes perfect sense. So, blast to oblivion. This was spoiled by Yuki. Zero for four lightning. So we are we are in Briar Country. Thank God, there's no more Briar. Um, with really unique tech. So when this attacks, the next time you play an instant card, this chain link, which is wording I don't think we've ever had, you may return target aura permanent with cost one or less to their owner's hand, which again, that could be your opponent's shimmers, or it could be your own sigil of brilliance or whatever other aura you may have on board. Um, this sting card, of sorcery, sting of sorcery, perhaps um, this card hoses Tyler Horsepool's entire battle hardened deck. Um, <laughs> but this mechanic is very cool. This is giving us like a whole new flavor of what lightning does. Uh, interacting at instant speed and unique and kind of bizarre ways that we haven't seen where lightning isn't just, Oh, it's go again. It's like, Oh, here's instance that are also doing something interesting. Um, and it's, and it's a way to potentially play lightning cards more than once with only having yes. so many in hand. Exactly. Yeah. Like the, the difference between at the beginning of your action phase, destroy this text. And when this leaves the arena text, which people have been speculating about, and this is why you can bounce your sigil of brilliance without it being destroyed at the start of your turn. And you still get the effect of drawing the card. Um, so that's, that's the card that's got me the most excited from a flavor perspective. The, the card that I'm most excited for from a rune blade perspective, which this deep inside me is similar to Taylor is condemned to slaughter. Mm -hmm. um, it's effectively mm -hmm. come to fight uh, one for three uh, or one cost plus three to your next rune blade attack attack, not attack action card. So you can buff the weapon. Let's it go. blocks for three. My goodness, let's go. Yes. And then you can destroy an aura that your opponent controls. If you destroy an aura that you control uh, and it's a may. So, like all the things that just are flex like give Runeblade the flexibility that it needs. Um, and I'm just happy to see non attack actions that block for three in Runeblade. Hell yeah. Art's dope. And I'm loving this theme. Like I was thinking about it on the car ride home. I was like, man, this is, I don't know, because I don't play other card games, but the idea of that we're making these auras, these tokens that are auras, and then we're going to be able to manipulate them as a tangible resource in the game. I love that. As a person who makes silver and then wants to buy shit back and have those reoccurring effects like that, I'm all about a secondary resource of stuff, you know? Yes. You get to play with. Like, I think that's so cool and is a type of rune blade situation that gets me excited gets my rune chance aflame uh colin do you have cards that you want to talk about yes there are cards that were spoiled that i am here to talk about including one that i don't understand called regrowth shock <laughs> it's a twofer in a majestic level but <laughs> Taylor and Blake and Zane, who can play this card? Nobody. I don't get it. <laughs> yeah. What's your favorite format? Nobody. It's, it's Nobody. Earth and Lightning. That don't make sense. I can't play this card in this set. Okay, no cap. I thought when you said regrowth and then said shock, I was like, is this, does Colin love stuff that grows back? Is he like a big fan of like reptiles that regrow their tails or something? Like, what is the, like shock? Like shocking, of course, I'm going to like regrowth. But then I remembered there's <laughs> melt cards and one of them is shock. I think they should all be whatever they are, shock. Like there's <laughs> got to be like a weird pause and then shock. Yeah. Uh, it's like okay. a Kendrick yeah. flow, you know? <laughs> oh, it is. You're the shock. Kendrick, Let's go. Kendrick Lamar of Vaporize. Fresh Blood Podcast. Shock. 
<laughs> that is pretty good. What else like we got? That. Scroll back up. Back in time. Comet Storm. Shock. <laughs> Burn up. Shock. <laughs> Hold up. Shock. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go. It yeah. works. It does work. All right. So what? what is this card and why can't I play it with the new heroes? Because none of them have essence of earth and lightning, like our good friend Briar, who has essence of earth and lightning. So you can play this in Briar, which Boo. I think it's maybe good. I mean, what came to my brain right away is because I spent the first part before they broke Cheerios, broke Cheerios Briar, I was like blossoming Spellblade Briar. So I was trying to turn that into a crazy draw combo action point deck um so blossoming spellblade is uh has earth and lightning fusion so it's the like Okanold mm -hmm. of elemental rune blade so if it was fused it gains whenever this deals damage to an opposing hero you may banish a non-attack action card from your graveyard if you do you may play it this turn as though it were an instant and if it would be put into your graveyard, instead banish it. And then when you fuse, it does one arcane damage, six physical and cost two and box three. So now you have another card other than a uh, candle hold, pulse of candle hold, that is earth and lightning that you can fuse with to make it happen. And then it's a non-attack action and an instant. So you could like creepers it to deal another arcane damage and then like replay blossoming spellblade and or use this f as the target for blossoming spellblade and all of this stuff i had this whole thing going where you have like gorganian tome and you have uh uh any other like uh other cards that draw you cards like oh electrify tome of, yeah tome of the arc knight all of these non-attack actions that you could just then like play if blossoming spellblade did uh, damage so anyway oh yeah what does regrowth do I guess nobody knows that because they're not reading it uh, earth rune blade <laughs> action return an attack action card with costs less than x from your graveyard to your hand where x is the total arcane damage you've dealt to opposing heroes this turn right so shock is one spellblade is two so then you could uh, return blossoming spellblade back and play it again yeah, I gotta do three it says and say less. Oh, cost less say, than X. Yeah. Right. Yep. Got to do three. Okay, so got to do three. So revel so then, in rune blood. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He's revel in rune blood. You got to use uh, Sparkle Tree. What's it called? That does amp. Oh, channel, channel the, millennium the millennium tree. tree. Yeah, Sparkle Tree. Got it. Uh, nailed it. So yeah, you got to use that, and then boom, you're good to go. So there you go. You could also, deck. you know, what was it the. Sh Shock Charmers, Shock Charmers, the Spellblade, get Regrowth Shock out of your graveyard into the Banish, and then do that. And then when you do that, you've done enough arcane damage to play the Blossoming Spellblade again to get your other Regrowth Shock. Dude, we're going to go infinite. We're going shock. Regrowth Shock. Uh, shock. All right. So it's pretty good. I'll play Living Legend, maybe. Briar was pretty strong, and now she's going to, like, I think that's the other thing about Living Legend is, like, uh, if you're a Runeblade, you're like, oh, all these new tools are, I just got buffed. Thank you for everything. We haven't even seen the Majestics yet. Obviously, there'll be at least three busted Runeblade Majestics. She doesn't Majestics. care about Runeblade cards, bro. Yeah. It says generic hero. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so am I supposed to pick another one now? Um, no, 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 no. Or either me or Blake. Either one. Did everyone else do two? Just Zane is the only person who has gone. Oh, fuck. All right. Well, then, Blake. Seeds of Tomorrow about... is a very interesting one. Ooh, that tell I, us more. I was like, this is our only Majestic we've seen, so they did say that we were going to see 20% of the Majestics before two weeks from now. So maybe this is the only one. But I'm scrolling, I'm scrolling, I'm scrolling, I'm scrolling to get there. I'm in the wrong chat to scroll up, so let me go to this chat. I'm scrolling, I'm scrolling. Basically, it is an instant for Earth. 
it is as an zero. additional cost to play this, put a card from your arsenal on the bottom of your deck, then prevent the next five damage that would be dealt to you. It's a blue. Cost zero. Earth instant. That's a, that's a pretty sick art. It Zane, looks like you forgot, you forgot the most important part. With boundless potential to flourish or wither, the fate of Candlehold lies in your hands. Queen of the Rosetta. And Queen of the Rosetta is not one of our characters that we can play as, so she seems like she is dead. A, a Sutcliffe or a Teklovasan before Teklovasan, where it's like she's important, but not important enough to play as. Anyway, also, Seeds of Tomorrow is very last, cool. Last thing, last thing, last thing. It's also an Olga Treskashenko piece, and those are really Okay, dope. why didn't okay. you should have picked this one, Taylor? No, you pick it. <laughs> I don't care about art unless it's our draft. Uh, no, it's a great art. Thank you, Olga. Olga, I think, is designing half of the cards currently. Um, what's cool about this is Earth is going to be a pain in the ass to kill. It does feel like both of these heroes are going to be the 65-minute tie games you will see at your armory, and you're going to have to play fat Like, when you sit across from Avertance or uh, Florian, they're going to go, I don't know if you quite know, but we're going to both need to play quicker here because these games can go a long time. So welcome Once back. Put down the ham sandwich. I'm talking to you. We yeah. Have to play faster. <laughs> like that. Welcome back that half of Oldham. And this basically says prevent the next five damage. It doesn't say choose an instance to block. So it's going to be better than our, our Oasis stuff. And that can be like, because you're going to be up against split damage heroes, because I do think some of these wizards are going to be playing attack actions on purpose because they get so many bonuses from them. It'll be like, I'll block six, do this. This will block the seventh damage and the four cost spell that comes my way all in one card. Or this is what you can do of like, do I have the Seeds of Tomorrow in hand whenever Kano does his first thing? I... I, I'm pretty sure Kano's about to like win worlds is what I would almost assume based on <laughs> he's about to get a crap load of wizard generic cards and there's like at least three wizard majestics that are going to be available to Kano and Majin Bay won on Saturday anyway and when I was next to him one day he was like based on the spoiler card I saw like it, this is full blown like it's time to win for with this stuff this is the window. and But he was also saying, I'm excited to play other Wizards because I'm tired of playing Kano at this point. Not that he told me that officially or off the record, but whatever. <laughs> it's hearsay. Who's, he said Majin Bay said, but... Um, so I think this card is going to be, I need to have protection against Wizards, and now I do have it. Of Just a quick, easy, I don't need to have a tunic up. I just have to have a card in my arsenal. I could put one of these. My first one I draw, I could put it in Arsenal to be ready for the next one and do that. Plus, it stops some breakpoints. If you're like, Zen is going to do one and then two and then one and then two, you're like, cool, this is going to block the first five of that. Tight. Yeah, it's a really cool effect. I like the little subtle nod to Crown of Seeds, like mm -hmm. damage prevention, bottoming your arsenal. It's called Seeds of Tomorrow, but... Yeah, don't arsenal it if it's your only copy. <laughs> Unless <laughs> or you, you play standing tome order. Of, tome of whatchamacallit. Yeah, Tome of Harvest. True. There's break, break ground, standing order. We I went through all of them earlier on a Discord, and I was like, maybe this is a Riptide Earth deck where you just do all of your arsenal interaction cards to make sure you always have Seeds of Tomorrow ready to go. Yeah, it's really cool. Great art. Yeah, great good art. pick. Great pick. I I will go. Great job. If you make it or if you have no, none left, I'm going to do two. A new one just came in, so I'm going to do that one second. Um, boy, the art on some of these is so good. Uh, Rotwood Carapace is my is my first card. This I don't know why, but when I saw this, like, dang, we're decomposing. As a defense reaction is so sick um, because it like allows you to get that decompose going without having to like super be proactive. 
which I think is cool that you can do both, be proactive, decompose, be defensive, decompose. And that got me really excited about Florian and like what that deck is going to look like because I love me a build up into a later game superpower and combo off, you know? Frost Hex was great. Skeleta, Viscerai was great. Uh, Graven Call is great, you know? Shackle um, 7. <laughs> Shackle 7 is crazy. So I love that shit. So I'm pretty excited about that. Art goes hard, too. Art goes hard. Um, oh, yeah. Rotwood Carapace. It's a defense reaction that defends for 3 in red, costs 0, and it has Decompose. You may banish 2 Earth cards and an Action card from your graveyard if you do this gets plus one defense so cool new defense reaction that can block for four that's free and i like that because maybe you play that over the other ones sorry my loud neighbors drove by in their stupid car then i'm gonna give a shout out to this new one that just came through uh vantage point rune blade attack action cost three attacks for seven defends for three it, I'm picking it because it has Evil Zordon on it, which I think is freaking awesome. Uh, if you've played or created an aura this turn, this gets overpower, which is sick. I really love that. Um, as a person who has tried to get Arknight Ascendancy to work a thousand times and it doesn't, this gives me Arknight Ascendancy vibes of <laughs> can't block it. So there we go. Those are my spoiler cards. I'm pretty stoked. I like that. Take that prism. You're gonna. Your Herald of Triumph does nothing. <laughs> nothing. I like that this guy who's. I think he's tied up because the image is small. Though it looks like he's just down there, kind of partying in front of these <laughs> other dudes in robe without his shirt on. He's like, "What's up?" Zordon shock. You know. Zordon shock. Yeah. Shock. All right. <laughs> Any other spoilers? That's it. We're done. <laughs> I mean, there's a bunch more, but we don't need to go. We don't need to be- belabor them. You, you, if you're listening to the podcast, you've probably seen most of them. They're very cool. Yeah, a lot of interesting design space. Yeah, which that I'm going to shout out them already about that because I was like, okay, cool. We're going to do more fuse. We're going to do more non-attack actions with go again and stuff that cares about that. But no, it's like way different design space and bringing freshness to old stuff. So that's just great. We love that. Great design. And none of these say be chess at all. So you know that they, (laughs) they did try a little harder to think about it. Um, I think Vincent is going to be a huge winner too. Yeah. Yes. If you've been playing Vincent, congratulations. You are about to like punch everyone in the mouth that has like been making fun of you or like like do unbelievable zero to two card hands of like I'm gonna break this aura, make three rune chants, then rune gate into Mav, and then do it all over again and again and you're gonna be like, What the hell just happened to me? And if you have that practice, great. Shout out to Jake. West Coast greatest Vincent player. I have played Vincent at two armories. <laughs> Shout out to Zane, the second best West Coast <laughs> Vincent player. Man, I'm going to give it to Patrick. Patrick's number two. Oh, shit. All right. Shout out to Zane, the third best. Third best. Zane's number three. <laughs> I'll take it. <laughs> All right. Well, <laughs> we're an hour in. Should we talk about the main topic? <laughs> Blake and Zane, let's talk about Battle Hard in San Diego. Me and Colin were not there, but we watched it on the YouTubes and all of the ads, and we got through it all, and we <laughs> we watched them gameplay. You know, you got to get yours, but the, the ads midstream were aggressive. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, I didn't know. But- what did they do ad-wise? It's just YouTube ads would pop up like in the middle of you watching it. Like you'd be oh, like, dude. oh, I'm Jimmy Gomez, or I'm doing. And you're just like, okay, shit, man. Like, like, Jimmy. like, way too much, or like occasionally. I mean, when you're <laughs> when a match takes maybe an hour 
feels like a lot. Also, uh, Jimmy Gomez is my new favorite uh, <laughs> advertisement person. <laughs> We've made a lot of characters on this episode. <laughs> He's a no. He's a congressman or something. He's a, oh, he's he's a real a dude. Man. That was, I didn't know this was a real person. Yeah, that was the ads I was getting served for my local elections. I wonder. I wonder what they're going to use the ad money for for AGE. Let, uh, I don't know. Talk, free, talk about the free, tournament. Free please. t-shirts or food? Uh, the battle hardened was interesting. It was ninety-eight people, so Fuck. it was like we're going to do seven rounds, not eight. Which is a little bit like, okay, thank God it's not eight because yes. And it was like hubbub, 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 hubbub. Like you see people like, oh, there's some people I didn't think they would be here. And then you're like, oh, are they to me? Oh, somebody came late. Oh my gosh, get your deck list in. I was going to play Uzuri, literally the Shoma list. I've only played five games on it. I don't know why. I was like, I really hope, I think I have a shot here. It's like, you you actually need to <laughs> practice your goddamn deck, okay? And like, but it was pretty solid deck, and it felt like, oh, if I'm playing someone that maybe has been playing less than me, or maybe is a newer player on their hero, that this deck is strong enough for me to get there, and that was great. And I started off three and zero, oh, but the third round was against a Kano, and I walked into that matchup with zero AB. And I was like, I don't even know if this is worth playing. I hope you're bad. And he goes, guess what? I'm bad. I was like, what? You're 2-0. This is, this is how you do it. This is the way. Basically told me, like, oh, he's only been playing for like three months. And I'm like, but he's, he's countering me perfectly throughout the whole thing. And there's like a small discrepancy at the end of this. And like, I surgical and hit his last aether wildfire because i shred or his second to last aether wildfire so i was like oh i think i'm fine now <clears throat> but then i isolate blue into just a nick just a nick and he draws in his one copy of snag to survive <laughs> and i was like are you fucking kidding me you drew into it he's like i drew into it and then we both look at his graveyard and i can only see there's there's Three sinks, three fates, one oasis, and one snack. That is that is what he's doing. He's stack Kano. And I'm like, I don't I only see seven. Where is the last sink below it? And he has to have played it. And I say something to the effect of like, how do you still have a D React? And so we're not playing our cards. We are literally like, and I not neither of us are like trying to shark. We are just talking and he's like i'm so bad and i'm just a talker and he basically says like oh i think i got it and he didn't have it once so i was like about to scoop and like this goes back and forth three times so let me do the, <laughs> them quickly because i go where's your I'm, last d react I'm confused <laughs> i okay here's let me just actually say it where's your last d react at how do you still have one but all of them were in his graveyard and I just couldn't, I didn't like, it must've been stuck. He looks through his graveyard and doesn't find a, the, the right number either. So now he's playing Kano scared of, I can't hit that last D reactor. I'll auto lose. But he like ends up running out of cards. I hit him with the thing. I, I banish a card from his hand, but not the top of his deck. And we, we, I could have called a judge, but he's like, you got me anyway. And I was like, okay, then we won't do the trigger. Like, it's too too annoying to call the judge. And then he's like, wait, I think I may actually have you. And I was like, are you kidding me? Like, I should always just call a judge. It's a lesson. I'm never going to learn the lesson because I'm so bad with judges. But, like, like explaining all that would have been, like, annoying. And, like, okay, why did you do this? Uh, we're just we're, – we're having too much fun instead of playing competitively. And then he goes to kill me. He goes, oh, I do have a wildfire. Oh, I do have – blazing and there's only one card left on the in his deck there's i'm fatiguing this azuri or <laughs> what's his name kano i'm fatiguing this kano he has one card left which would technically not be there if i had done my surgical extraction trigger and i'm like god damn it i'm about to lose to this and then he flips over the last card and we should know what it is it's gaze the ages it does no arcane <laughs> <laughs> and then he goes, oh, it's it's gaze. 
there's no way I win. And I'm like, great. Like, about to click, like, I win. And he goes, actually, it's 15. <laughs> and I have 15 health. And I was like, what? How? And I was like, well, explain to me the math real quick. And he goes, oh, it's actually 13 or something. And I was like, we, we what? <laughs> 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 and it was just like, Equal parts nerves. This is his first bigger tournament. Probably the first yapper he's playing against where it's like, <laughs> if we had just shut up the whole time each, he probably beats me because I accidentally get him into the mindset of, where's your last D-react? And he was like, where? Like now that I look at my graveyard later, there was a, like, how did this happen? And it was a fun back and forth. He walks on in gas lamp later and ate with us. And because he was there by himself or whatever of like, I had, maybe I shouldn't say be like, like on a work trip slash fab trip. So I was like, oh, that's cool. Um, so that was that. And then immediately going to a stream game. And it was the first time I did a stream game. And it was like, I just got gifted the biggest karma thing ever. <laughs> and now I have to play Anthony on a deck that he's played for legitimately like a year and a half. And, and like your worst matchup, one of them. <laughs> but I beat two Riptides on Tuesday. So Jacob Smoogly Hawkinson must have bad, known bad you know, player. Fat, fatigue, fatigue Riptide is a different hero than mid-range and aggro Riptide. It is a different hero. So I guess I should be like... I got him Sorry, to four, Jake, and, and we, we didn't go to time. So <clears throat> I played my heart out. But between those two experiences, it was like, I, I need to go to Fab Boot Camp where for like 10 days in a row, I just play seven hour rounds, seven rounds of an hour long. And like, this is how you get mentally tougher or like get your, get your stamina up. But I was like, Beat a Kano with zero AB where I have no expectations whatsoever. And then almost beat Anthony. I forgot a trigger that maybe mattered of not shuffling his deck after Bonds of Agony because he didn't have a card because he sigiled. And you're just like, damn, what could have been, man? But like, it, it, it was, I think, I think I should go back and watch that game and see if there was something I could have done differently. But Totally. That's a great resource is that you have your game to go watch. Yeah. You know, sick. And your tournament ended there, all downhill. Uh, well, yeah, I went three zero to four. three four, and it was. <laughs> it's like, let's go get drunk immediately. <laughs> <laughs> At least you played out all your rounds, though. It was fun to meet people, and then Jonah Overholt, that freaking guy from Arizona, Jonah. He's the one who beat me for my my <laughs> shot at Minnesota for nationals. And then got 11th there. So, you know, I, I've only lost to good people. Uh, he played the most disgusting five turns in a row from a KO I've ever seen. I only attacked twice the entire game and I lost by like 25. And I was like, what in what did I? Oh, all of my bad karma from round three showed up here of blood rush, blood rush, blood rush. Use my shoes to savage feast into beast. With, I was like, could you? He was like, yeah, I ran hot here. I was like, <laughs> like savage beat down for, I was like, God damn. If I, if this ever happened for me once when playing KO, I probably would have been like, this hero rules. <laughs> I can't play KO like that. Well, he was due for some good luck because I played Jonah round one on stream and he did not cast a single blood rush. <laughs> See, what the fuck, man? <laughs> Could you imagine, Zane, if I Dude, could play a brute Zuri. that didn't play three blood <laughs> rushes in a row? Well, I got to shuffle his deck twice, which I just kept shuffling him to the bottom, I guess. Oh, um, skill. Skill. Yeah. Skill. The new skill check. Um, <laughs> my tournament started similarly to Blake's, where I started 3 0. I was feeling good. I was near Blake for this game where they kept snip, snap, snip, snap, back and forth. And I could hear them, and it was mildly distracting, but that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> it was okay because I was playing against the Kano, because which I, I effectively am watching the game as if I'm watching a stream game there was to like, see if oh, they can kill me or not. There was a VR. row of Kanos where it was like five in a row versus yeah, their opponent. Yeah, it was, it like, was just what? yeah, the whole top tables was Kano. I knew I was like it was going to happen at some point. It, it was Eugene. It was at least like vaguely competitive. Um, 
but yeah, he got that one. So I went to three one. Then I got paired into Alan, who's like another member of Team Stroopwafel, and we're on literally the same deck. Like we're looking at the same February link with the same sideboard guy. Like <laughs> <laughs> literally everything. Um, the Luber shout out Lubers rise up. Yeah, you know? exactly. Wait, yeah. did you guys play the levels of Enlightenment and Surgical, or did you both take them out? Uh, no levels, but we play Surgical. Spicy. Yeah, because we run a little skinny on blues, so you can't cut too many. Um, but yeah, so he it was it was one of those like weird new new games where just like the tempo is bizarre, and he got it really far ahead, and I tried to claw back, but then I got stuck in mask loop at the end. Um, but then thankfully round six I got a win, so I, I still ended positive. So I was four three at the end, um, on new, which was my first time really playing new in paper, like for real, like at a real event. Um, so I was not thrilled with four three, but you know, it is what it is. Um, I lost it's matchups that made three, sense. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, thank God it wasn't three four. That would have been embarrassing. <laughs> Ding, it's 2-1 Zane to Blake right now. Blake won the, <laughs> the bet. Zane's got two zingers on Blake. Boom. Okay, anyway. Take two shots, everybody. Drinking game at home. <laughs> but yeah, <laughs> top eight was good, more or less. Um, the the top four being, well, I think it was Zen Zen Prism Kano. Is that right? No, Or was it Kano Kano Zen Prism? Yeah, yeah. Which, as we looked at it, we're like, those are just the three heroes that do the most like unfair things in the game. Like they're fragile ish, Zen maybe not so much, but like those are the heroes that do the stuff that's like the most unreasonable. Yeah, and maybe that's maybe that's what we should be doing. It's just playing to the ceiling. And they have Prism and Kano have like the biggest uh, in the game right now, like matchup disparity you know what i mean like if you're bad into prism you're like really bad into prism and if you're bad into kano you're like really bad into kano you know what i yeah. mean yeah yeah so i do know what you mean like i like <laughs> zero ab anything that anything the dude said it's like uh this for five i literally immediately went <laughs> Ding, ding, ding. <laughs> like I have never felt more hopeless, but I think it was interesting of like for a newer Kano, it's like throwing off his play patterns that he's used to of like, I'm used to only really opting two here, but I'm getting to do five and like, too many but, decisions. but now my opponent has all their cards for the crackback because I'm literally never interacting with them. So I'm always swinging with full Uzuri hand. And like, as long as I don't draw shred, 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 non-attack which happened once and i daggered and passed i was like what the fuck is this <laughs> how did you win this game and, and then because he blo- he went to he block <laughs> I, he went to block the dagger because he's like I, he's a newer player and he was very worried he's stacked kano and was worried about my nerve scalpel thank god i played nerve scalpel because it makes his d reacts worse so he kept blocking the nerve scalpel no matter what which is probably a bad idea and when I had extra shreds, it would be like, shred, that damage is going through. And it, it was just like, okay, let's go. And then... Um, I did one point. Yeah. <laughs> Two card one, baby. Two but he only, one. Has, he only has 30, so it's it's like, we're getting there. Make count, yeah, I guess so. It's like a graven call every time I hit him with a dagger just based on his hero. Bro, no way. <laughs> that thing does two, and then you flick it, and then it does another one. Okay. I did have flick knives. I think that was something that helped maybe to get the, like, I don't know if I did it against him. I, I did the flick knife. The, the, the nerf scalpel was a star all day, and but I kept telling people, like, you know I'm hitting you with my on effects because you're not blocking enough, right? And they were like, oh, I am. And it's like, nerf scalpel affects attack reactions, too. And they're like, do you mind if I change? And the whole day I was like, sure, go for it. Because I was up by 15 health. And then as soon as I was down by 15 health, everyone was like, no, it's competitive rules only. And I was like, <laughs> Dave, have, 
You obviously don't listen to the show because every single time someone says this, I say, stop doing that. <laughs> yeah. yeah, don't do that. You say, no, no I'm sorry. Sense. You can call a judge and then they can decide, but I'm not uh-huh. just yeah. letting you no take, take back you your back. turns because you oh, decided I, I you don't know. I forgot my tunic. Which... Nope. Sorry. Dude, I was, I was telling people, I was like, do your tunic real quick. Maybe that's why I won the Kano game because it was just, I was giving him every, like, go for it. You won the, your, his, the Kano the game because he was running defense reactions and you have no a b like what is this like does kano run defense reactions now is that, that is the new, yes. that is the new list yep yeah and we go, okay, here's back. this end recording button and then... <laughs> <laughs> an hour and 20 minutes in that's my funny. friend so you, Colin, unmovables, blue unmovables. <laughs> you break <laughs> the <laughs> needles. Yeah. Yes. That was no, sick. It was against Dory. Oh, it's got to, yeah. <laughs> both. Both are sick. Jesus. I'm not Dory. Yeah, uh, so that was that was that tournament. And tight. you were qualified for a bigger tournament than that one, right, Zane? Well, yeah. So Sunday was the AGE Open uh, and ProQuest Plus kind of hybrid event. Um, which I was like 21st or something in points, and you have to be top 16 to qualify for the player open. Yes, Colin? What does that mean? It's Good a, question. This has those? been a, a year-long open series, so like a once a month, there's a AGE open, um, and then there it's a 1K, and or this one was more because it was a ProQuest Plus, I think, because of the gold foil, but... Um, they're each 1Ks with so normal prizing, but then they also give out AGE points. And then after, what is it, eight, nine of these? Eight? Eight. It's August 8th. Um, the top 16 players by points get to qualify for the invite-only players championship. Um, last year, I finished like 18th because I couldn't go to like the last two. And I was like super annoyed. I just like watched myself like go down because I couldn't attend. And this year, I was like going into this event. I had missed like three of the AGEs this year, and I was like, "All right, I like literally have to top eight, and I still may not make it." And then round one, I get Kano, like a good Kano. It's uh, Eric Sneep, um, and I was like, "Oh my gosh, like the this is Kano. so <laughs> stupid." And then I got stacked. So, Colin, let me tell you how it goes. Now, this is against Assassin, not every hero, but. Against New in particular, because New's even slower than Missouri, is they just look at you and say, block nine, I'll pitch to Crucible, pass. I'll block nine, I'll pitch to Crucible, pass. Until they get to pitch stack, and then they kill you. So <laughs> on his kill on his kill turn, so like I know the bottom of his deck, it's it's like wildfire, tome, blue, blue, blazing, tome, blue, blue, blazing. And I happen to have double Oasis. And I'm like, I think the math still works out that I die here, but let's see. The the wildfires hit me for one and two. One and two. And I died from 40. (laughs) (laughs) That's fucked up. Yep. What? <laughs> because it's wildfire hits for one, wildfire hits for two, and then it's blazing for six because you've done three, and then they get buffed for by three, and then the next blazing's for twelve plus three, so it's for fifteen or whatever, and then the next one is for basically your whole life. So that's Colin, how you fun. You gotta get and, back into this stuff. That sounds good, man. That's how fun and interesting Assassin versus Kano is these days. Um, but yeah, so I was I was in the trenches. We were like, okay, my top sixteen chances are like zero. I basically have to win straight out, and like maybe need to even like make the semis or the finals to make this happen. Next Which is when K- Giles theme plays from Street Fighter Two. Okay, go. Exactly. So I get a KO. We chip him down. We get there. Then I pair into Peter Budensic on Zen. We chip him down. We get there. Then I pair into Paul. This is the Azalea. And I played on stream. Chip him down. Bonds of Agonium. Get him. 
Then I get Evan Bridges, get who famously oh. wants to beat Lost me really everything. badly and hates San Diego publicly for some reason, even though he's from Texas. Um, <laughs> Clap from he's Zen. from. He's from Mississippi, actually. We don't. Oh, care. really? Whatever. Yeah, he just went to school there. They're all the same. Um, <laughs> <laughs> just kidding. If you're listening in Mississippi, you yeah, can send me a message. Shout out, shout out in the comments is fear in Mississippi. Yeah. Anyways, beat his Zen. Whatever. Easy. Um, round six, I played Vivek, who is a relatively new player on Dash IO. He, he played a game on stream as well. Um, I had not felt good about that matchup, but it was very close. I think I was at like two life, but. We got there, squeaked in at six seed at X1. And then I checked uh, the standings as like, as Justin was like calculating the standings and I was tied for 16th, tied for 16th, which means like one of the people who are tied wouldn't make it. And then we realized that Eugene has like said that he can't make the weekend. So technically we both were in Um, (laughs) for what it's worth. I would have won the tiebreaker if that was the case. And it would have been uh, fuzzy who was like, unfortunately out even with the same number of points but because eugene can't make it we both are in um but we got there lost in the semis um i was i played not super well and there was some nonsense that happened but lost a close game to anthony who got absolutely destroyed in the finals which was very sad as a person who plays assassin like watching someone like get popped off on for 60 i'm like how do you play an aggro deck that lets that happen to you? Like, I don't know. I'm just, I'm just disruption brained. I, 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 I refuse <laughs> to let that happen. Like, I've never had a Zen pop off for 60 on me. Like, I, I just won't play a hero that lets it happen. Yeah. Um, critically can't pop off against Zane. Critically, you may not. Disruption um, build for sure. Yeah. So that was, <laughs> that was my AG. Ultimately successful, but pretty frustrating end. Um, new is incredibly taxing to play and like it it's not second nature to me yet like it was still new and i'm like man i'm thinking really hard every time i draw these like one of effects like <laughs> is the path well traveled like how do i use it here when do i new yeah yeah i did in the in the first top eight game i did get to play like 10 cards out of a zen's banish zone that that is a drug that never gets old yeah it felt no. good playing your opponent's cards yeah it was like, like harmony it always, harmony it always fighting stays breeze, new fighting. yeah i can't like i try to keep it cool and collected and maybe if my opponent is like chatting me up like blake maybe then i'll have fun but i can't help but smile and be like <laughs> when i play your blue cards from banish and i'm like i'm killing you with your cards <laughs> i got to, i got to trigger it. combo i got to do 100 wins into wins of eternity aren't i so <laughs> sexy playing your blues can't you not yeah i'm so alluring <laughs> yeah Ba-ba- boom don't you desire me cool i like this character also a lot of characters loving it great job yeah new is a blast though she's she's sweet um so yeah tiring weekend that was you know literally yesterday so i'm still feeling it a little bit but um yeah that was the ag stoked to make the players championship great job way to bring the podcast honor thank you Uh, yeah how can people root for you they can sign up to the patreon and tell me good luck in the discord (laughs) that's right that's the only place he'll read it Yeah. I like Tight. that. Sick. Uh, cool. I'll talk about my skirmish really quick. Dude, so your guys what is, was the format? Uh, Blitz. Nice. So we waffled in the morning back and forth. We we're like, okay, I'm pretty sure Patrick's playing Briar because what else is he going to do? All right. We got to. <laughs> We can we can handle that. And then we're like, okay, what the fuck is Levi playing? Is he going to play Benji? Is he going to try really hard and have no honor and play Zen? Is he going to play Shiana, which I'm actually act kind of scared about, et cetera? What's going to happen? And I waffled between Victor and Arachne, solitary confinement the whole morning. And then I was like, Psh, I'm an assassin player. I'm going to play Arachne. And then I was like, well, I should fucking tweak this thing a little bit. And I think I came up with some cool ideas, but did not commit hard enough to them. And uh, my deck ultimately low rolled in my blitz games, which 
happens sometimes. But how to find time, still top forward. <laughs> and, uh, oh, yes, Blake. Sorry, you distracted me with a, <laughs> a notification. Uh, I think I'll probably do a deck tech about yeah, this arachne tech. list pretty soon, I think, Colin, if you're, if you're down or whoever. Uh, <clears throat> so my uh, innovation in the deck, I don't know if it's innovation, but I was taking a look at my cards and I was like, you know, now that Justin Nick's in here, you have way more blues and you always have go again on like your red, basically. What if I put Prismatic Leyline in this deck and then I can play that from Arsenal and go Infect for four, Persuasive for four? And Surgical that's like for seven? Yeah, it's pretty, uh, pretty, uh, yeah. Surgical for seven is freaking sick. That did not happen, but because I only, half committed to prismatic ley line and was like, okay, I can only, I'm only going to put one in here. And I think I should have just cut a codex and put the other one in because codex is kind of like, they're like slightly less good in blitz than they are other formats. They they are. There's so much armor, but yeah. Yeah. Everybody has armor and nobody wants to fucking block anyway. So you might as well just deal some more damage. So that's what you I kind of came up with, and do, I thought it was play cool. Prowl at all? Oh yeah, we are, baby. Mm-hmm. We're playing Prowl, so persuasive comes in for five. Yeah, we we did that. It was pretty sweet. It was a cool move, and I was like, especially because I don't know why I haven't looked at prismatic before. I was like, this shit blocks for three. I could have sworn in my head it blocks for two, but no, it blocks for three. So boom, we slapped that into the deck. So I would make some changes. I don't know if I would still run my single copy of Death Touch or not. And I cut the CNCs for a few more red stealth cards, which maybe I want to have one CNC. I don't know. Just sometimes a two card hand, that CNC is kind of maybe a little bit better than like uh, a red stealth attack and then a blue infect or something like that because so many people have armor. And at least it's like a little bit more damage. So anyway, uh, it was cool getting to play a hero that is is just like the fourth assassin, you know, and get to play it as not a meme, as like a real threat that everybody was like pretty nervous to play and worried about because of your deck building choices and that sort of thing. And it was cool. The other thing I put in there was double trouble. And that's pretty dope. That's a dope card. And uh, is maybe underplayed. It's just pretty sick to flick knives and then play Razor's Edge and then bam, you've done eight damage. You know? Nine damage with flick knives. And that's kind of out of nowhere. And you can't do that a lot with just two cards. Two card nine. (laughs) At at the end of the weekend, I was saying that I, I wanted double trouble like in my CC new deck. Mm-hmm. Like I, I was like a little bit skinny on blues, and I was like, I think that's the next that's the next blue up. If I was gonna play one more, nice. Yeah, you can play it in red in Arachne, so that's the cool part. Yeah, so you can really do a lot of damage. So anyway, that was my skirmish. Less exciting, less on the line, etc. I'm pretty upset. I didn't win Blaze. I wish I had, and I wish I hadn't seen that card in person before the skirmish and been like. Fuck, that's so cool. Uh, I hope to win and then had expectations of winning and hoping to get a blaze, but didn't get it. So it's fine. There's always next time. Nah, that's the only skirmish I'm going to. I was going to go to a Living Legend one in Sonoma. Shout out to Sonoma Living Legend skirmish next weekend. But I'm going backpacking with my wife and friends, and that sounds way more rewarding than Sonoma Con. Sorry. Mm -hmm. Nice. Oh, okay. Not sorry. Reasonable. Thank you. Thank you for that. Anyway, is that it? We got anything there's else we w- want to talk about? There's. I can do the quick rundown of this if you guys want me to, or I could also not bring it up at all. I, I would love to. I don't even know what you're talking about. The Laughing Dragon convention thing that was in <laughs> L.A.? So... <laughs> <laughs> what was interesting about this is we had been wondering, are we going to get Blaze promos at this convention? This has been advertised around LA 
as a flyer in game stores for about the last three months. It's literally like one of those, like, are you going to read the flyer or not? What was very frustrating is a lot of people were like, I had no idea. And you're like, how did 27 people go to, it was a pro pro quest plus, And then it was two one Ks on Sunday. And this was basically a magic thing. The store is in was was Washington, not Wisconsin, Washington. I don't know if they're just trying to get more presence on the West Coast. So you always go to them first. But it was like, I'm showing up on Friday because I wanted to check what's going on. I wanted to get more information. I wanted to spend a bunch of money on the merch booth because I had seen when you click the button, the third thing they showed was first strike. And I was like, if I can get first strike decks a week early, that'd be amazing. I want to put, I want to do the Aurora thing. And I know somebody will probably appreciate if I give them a, a Terra deck or something. So I talked to somebody on Friday night and I'm like, how do we get a blaze? And they're like, actually, we're not going to tell you at all. We're, we're just not going to tell you. We're just not going to tell you. And it was like, okay, but like, I'm literally trying to give you money. Like, I could do a wide, I could do a Twitter post. I'm not saying everyone dials into my Twitter on Friday night for tomorrow, but if you said to me you're gonna get a Blaze promo, Blaze promo was participation for the ProQuest Plus. If you told me that, there would have been 15 to 20 more people there. And it's like, who is not getting out of their way? Is it is it LSS not advertising correctly? Is it this Laughing Dragon not advertising correctly? Why would they not want more people to come spend stuff? I I did want to buy something from a merch booth. I was like, hey, is there an LSS presence here? Is there a booth for them? They have huge stand-up things that you've seen at all those callings, but there's not a booth. There's not an employee from LSS to sell things. And they did tell me, I don't know how official this was, oh, we were going to get a package from LSS, but it's not going to arrive on time. And I'm like, is that where there's t-shirt? Is that where there's those Stanley Cups that are way too expensive? Like, what does that package mean? Is that where the first strike decks are? Because I'm literally saying this person, like, I I don't know how um, senior they were, but it was like, I want to spend money on this, and this is why I'm here. And it was just not a thing. And then to skip to the end of the story, the 1Ks on Sunday were, like, guaranteed 1K, and only seven people showed up. Eight people showed up to the first one, and seven people showed up to the, the second one. So they split a 1K prizing just between seven and eight people. And you're like, well, that that's c- clearly a bust. But there was also something from the Star Wars people split a 4K between 22 people. Of Everyone showed up, played their, pri- played their entry fee, and then left with like $100 more than their entry fee. And it was just like, what? So that's a thing where I think it's frustrating because... We've gone through the layer of, we need more West Coast events. We need more West Coast events. I promise you, stop giving all the events to the East Coast. Yes, this one was poorly attended. This is more of a convention. But now we have our battle hardens that we had of like, there's one in LA. There was one in um, San Francisco. There's the San Diego one. And it feels like, like I'm trying to push the LA people of like, if there's a battle harden within two hours of you, You can't, oh, the meta is pretty bad. Like, you got to get there and go. If you're a hardcore player or if you're like, oh, I need it to be a more pristine. Like, the the sun has to come through the stained glass window and the orange hits me on the forehead and the purple hits me on the chin. So it looks like I'm cheering for the Clemson Tigers of the, uh, what are they, ACC? It's like, Mm -hmm. they can't be perfect. You need to go do stuff. Because like I, I've I've seen metas or or stores die because people are waiting for the perfect like opportunity to play fab the way they like it. And I, I was kind of disappointed that only twenty seven people showed up to a ProQuest Plus with really good pricing of like every anything you joined on that weekend, you were plus money and plus promos. Dang. And it's like, oh damn. And but then there wasn't the support also of like and come buy these t-shirts or like why did why wasn't there the monday like the blazes are ready for you to come grab them 
Because I know there's some locals that are like, I really want a Blaze. Should I buy one or not for Blitz season? It's like, you don't have to. You just have to show up downtown. And yes, park parking was a little expensive. So maybe this is where you carpool with your local armory people. Split some tacos, split some parking. But like, I know we as, has we as, oh my God, we as a crew in SoCal have talked about we need more stuff on the West coast. This is just so unfair. There's another thing on the East coast. And then some people skip the pro tour LA of skip that calling of like, I, I'm just going to do this instead. I'm not saying if, if you were doing side events, I'm not talking about you there. There's some people that were like, I, uh, I, it's just, well, we, do, we just don't have SCG that does all the cons, you know, and they're like known to do their flesh and blood stuff. And we just don't have, right. And we don't have the realm games, you know. We have a. But would we show left. up for them if they did extend to SoCal? Like I, yeah, I can't. I can't. I can't. I think there's a level of if you have it enough times, people will get to go. Like maybe it's poorly right. advertised, poorly timing. You know, like I would go to more events, but they're always at the wrong time for me. So there's a. I think you are correct, but yes, and this other thing. Right. And then the AGE on Sunday dumped from, oh, not, not dumped, sorry, dropped from 98 to like 40. And like, that no, was over 50. What was it? 50 what? It was like 51 or something. Okay. So two away from 40 something. Sorry. <laughs> so 51, <laughs> it, it's half of what it was. And I, that's something where it's like, that's also kind of sad. But I was like, I got to get back for this birthday party on Sunday. But like, also, I have to like joke about this, but also mean it. Like SoCal is quote unquote free. Of we have lost to Brody twice, we have lost to a NorCal person, and we have lost to a Cal- Colorado person in the Battle Hardened slash Sunday event afterwards. And like we talk a big game, and like yeah, we get some inter- international stuff sometimes, and some people top eight at nationals. But it really sucks to watch Brody come in and beat us again for one of the two tournaments where you're like, how do we stop this guy from eating our lunch? He already has his lunch. He's he eating his lunch. He literally does nothing lunch. else. We got to beat him next time, though. Let's. How do we then practice? quit your job and only play <laughs> flesh and blood. Like, okay, we, need to do, we need to do that for next time. Somebody. Whoever's yeah, on could have been Zane. We could have had a different podcast. Hey, yeah. I, I was four zero into I was four zero into Zen all weekend. So I blame you. That final insane action podcast. It would be yeah. We could, we have, we could have been having a fun podcast, but also it's I good. played Enigma at Laughing Dragon, and I, I like went. The thing about Laughing Dragon is that I've never heard of it. So why would I go? And like, you I know, think it being in foil? downtown downtown LA is like a huge negative. Yeah, gold foil. Yeah. Pro Tour, like, oh, by the way, Jacob Hawkinson won it and Shout is going to go Jake. be able to play in um, Worlds now World. in Osaka. And it's like, I'm not saying that was the world beaters that he beat. He he lost to Tao Tao by one and then Tao Tao gets enigma in top eight. Like, I'm sure Tao Tao knew about it. Why, why does Tao Tao know about this? Because he's dialed in and wants to win something that is important. And it is like... Like, are we not impressed by gold foils and PTIs anymore? Like, well, <laughs> it's so top heavy. Only one person wins. But you get your Blaze promo. Like, it. This is the only. Like, every other tournament we're entering, we're, we we are negative whenever we start off. Like, this is. If you sell your Blaze promo, you're like plus ten dollars. Love that. Well, I don't know. And, been, and uh, earning ten dollars on the whole day is like you know pays for one fifth of your parking. Yeah, pay <laughs> for half the parking. I showed, I went with Jake, and then we got we went to the same place you had Korean barbecue for your birthday. And they were like, "This is a good spot." I was like, "I know because Colin's birthday." And then Evan's like, "I guess I'll get invited to Colin's birthday next year." I was like, "When is the last time you talked to Colin?" <laughs> Evan, you got to start talking to people instead of playing board games when you're in San Diego. Then you get invited to their birthdays. Not shout out to Evan now. He hates San Diego and Zane lives there. So now I'm upset. (laughs) (laughs) 
Thanks for coming to our Assassin Action podcast. All three of us played Assassin. We're all different levels of good at of Assassin. Yeah. They yeah. All three of us who all played. taking a sabbatical from Assassin right now. <laughs> uh anyway, trying to outro us here. See you later, everybody. Thanks. Thanks for coming. Like, subscribe, comment. Join the Patreon. Give us a yell. dislike if you disliked it. That always yeah. that always peaks Be my honest, interest. You know, I'm just yeah, like, totally. ooh, only ninety eight percent liked on this episode. I must have said something truthful. <laughs> <laughs> uh, join the Patreon, please. Come on, get in there, people. You can wish saying good luck on his next tournament. Yeah, that's what we do in there. It's an elite group of people, so. You're right. Maybe it's too too cool, too exclusive for you. You probably you probably wouldn't have a good time in there. Does that work? Yeah, I mean, four ducks is a lot. It's like you know, yeah. less only than a big, latte. Big ballers from showing up for us. Uh, <laughs> and Sweet. yeah, thanks. Maybe okay, I'll play assassin next time. <clears throat> Hell yeah! And then I'll add you to the list of people who played. Assassin. Oh my gosh. Whoa. I don't even have a cold foil. Is Anti shout out to Levi who won't trade me his extra cold foil Azuri. He has two and he won't trade you one? Dude, he's just like, I'm like, I got these things that you want. And he's like, I don't know what you're talking about. Don't yeah. you get your dog to like poop on his lawn or something? <clears throat> oh, she does. Slash, it's my <laughs> yeah. lawn. Yeah. Still, so Maybe that's why matter. he's not doing it. Though. Yeah, totally. <laughs> Maybe I'll raise his rent, and then I'll be forced to give it. <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, okay. I mean, yeah. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Wait, let's intro bye. back in real quick. There's, there's another spoiler card we need to talk no, about. Hello. Uh, check. It's called Eviction Shock. <laughs> <laughs>